there are a few more things that you can do in the inspector. For example, you can type in a different name here. Let's call it Banjo. We called it lead part before. You can also double click here to give it a different name. Lead. Or you can just press Alt N on the keyboard. Alt N to type in a different track name. Let's go back to Banjo again. Like that. If a part is selected, like this one for example, then the inspector changes to part info. We've done that before. If a track if a part is not selected it goes to track info. If a part selected it goes to part info. And therefore if I want to change the name of the part here, I need this one to be on part info and now I can call this one banjo number one for example. And I can select the second part and call it banjo two. If I want to change the names of all the tracks, or sorry, of all the parts that I select, like all of these here, for example, and if I type in, for example, drum part, then only the first one will change. But if I do the same thing again, drum, drum X, why not, and keep my finger on control before I press the return key, then all the parts here will get the new name. Let's just call them drum part for now. Or just drum. I press control, keep my finger on control, hit return. And I'll also do the same for this one, but now I press Alt N again. Drums. I go down to the next track. This is my bass track. I press Alt N, bass. And all of these here, this is how I select those parts now part info. I just type in base, keep my finger on control, and hit return, and then let go of control. And here we'll call it harmony or chords. Uh, stick with harmony. Part info. Control. Okay, if I zoom out. Whenever you draw a new part, it gets the name of the of the track. Like if I draw a part here, it's called Audio 2, same as the track is called. And if I've got a new part here, it's called Harm or Bass or this one's gonna call Banjo now. So these two these two or maybe the whole lot of those can be changed to to and I keep my finger in control. Don't need this part. If a part is selected, it shows you in the inspector where the part starts and where the part ends. And you can also change these values and notice how the part moves forward. You can even change these values by beats, even though the snap setting here is set to bar. You can still address the beats if you had to quickly. Back to the original one again. If you change the end, the part becomes shorter. And we've also lost our music inside the part as well. That doesn't matter. I'll delete the part and make a copy of this one and just move the copy forward back to normal again. So let's select this part here and um, play around with some of the settings here. This is the um, volume level at the moment. And if you go down here and um, the volume all the way down to zero, we can't hear anything anymore. A high level, 87. We've got some volume back again, 127 being the max. Options are the transpose one here. So if I set this one up, minus by three. Three semitones, or um, seven semitones. Or let's take it down um, down by a fourth. Back to normal again. You can double click and just type in a number. 
zero. Velocity will add um, velocity to the velocity values you've got in your editor. We'll talk about velocity later on. So we'll make the part play later or, or earlier. So if we add a delay of one, or let's say two, and play along to the click, you can hear that the click starts first and then the part comes in a little bit later. These are sixteenth notes here. So if we put down, um, yeah, this is the maximum you can. It's two sixteenth notes and two thousand five hundred and sixty ticks. And if you want to make the um, part play earlier, you could type in, for example, a minus two. It'll take you all the way down to the maximum in the in the minus direction. So if we play the part with a click. You could hear that the um, part came in a little bit earlier than the um, beat one. Two, three. So let's put this one back again. I'll type in zero. Let me add um, the pan settings to the um, to the um, track listings. Now I've got the track listing here. It says right 63 and it says right 63 there as well left 61, left 61 there, and if I add volume to it as well, there's volume, open this one up a little bit, the volume is 125 at the moment, if I set this one to a different value, 50, it's 50 there as well, 7, 7, 77, so you can use the inspector, or you can just use the um, track listings, the track columns, um, depending on what you've used, like Making use of the part info setting as opposed to the track info setting can be quite useful sometimes. For example, you could have a few parts in like this, where you change the panning as you go along. This one set to left, this one to right, and this one back to the middle again. change the transpose settings for a few parts, let's say the whole arrangement as it, as it carries on, then you can do this easily as well. Just like this. And then select a whole bunch of parts, type in 3, type in 6, copy value to all selected parts, just enter yes again. Obviously there can be um, a little bit of confusion if you, for example, set the, um, the pan setting for the whole track to the left hand side and then you think that you're setting the pan settings for the whole track to the right hand side but you had the one of the parts selected and you just didn't notice that this part was selected. In order to avoid this, um, this confusion, you can go into the Preferences, Edit, Preferences, general arrangements arrangements and then do tick on restrict inspector to track changes which means that whenever you change um, 
make changes in the inspector, it, it only affects the track settings, not the part settings. By the way, you've got a little tick box here that says, if you tick it, it says save with song. If this is unticked, all the changes you make here will go into your general Cubase preferences and will be available or will be working every time you open any Cubase song, past, present and future. Whereas if you keep this one ticked, the changes that you'll make here will only affect this particular song, which can be useful if you, for example, work with different clients and they want their own personal settings, then it's good if you do these settings for for the different clients to um, take safe with song. And if it's um, a personal setting, a personal preference that you want, want to have ticked with everything you work on, then obviously you won't take this one. This little um, tick box comes up in a few different dialogues which are related to settings and preferences and things like that. I usually keep this one unticked because I like to have access to my parts and I want to be able to make the changes usually. So I'll cancel this one now. Another good feature in Cubase is the fact that you can customize the track column arrangements and the track column view. I'm going to get rid of the inspector for now and I'll show you what I mean. I'll open up the track column view a bit more and if I click up here, anywhere up here, this thing comes up, this menu comes up and you can choose which elements you want to show or not show. So I could do a very very sparse version of, of maybe just the track names. Get rid of activity, get rid of class, the mute column, appearance, outputs and and channel. And now I've got a track column or just this only track column which only shows the the track names.